Hello everybody. Welcome back. Today we're going to be starting a new unit, Unit 8, and we're going to be looking at Unit 8.1, which is on the introduction to acids and bases. And I want you to have your equation sheet out because this section right here, equilibrium, we're going to be using um, a lot of equations today that are in that section. So have that nearby and let's get started. All right, so those of you that have gotten to know my videos, you know that I always put a little factoid at the beginning, and I just think this one is funny. I guess ostriches are basically just big, dumb birds. <laughs> anyway. All right, so as I said, we're starting this new unit on acids and bases, and we're going to start off with a little bit of review and... It's mostly on vocabulary, okay? So reviewing back from, you know, what was likely your definition of acids and bases back from your Chem 1 days, the Arrhenius concept where acids produce hydrogen ions, bases produce hydroxide ions. And it's not that that concept is wrong, it's just not complete, okay? For example, ammonia is a base, okay? But ammonia does not contain hydroxide. So this Arrhenius concept, mostly of bases, had to change, okay? And this is a little bit of review back from unit four, where we talked about this for the first time. Bronsted-Lowry concept of acids and bases. Acids are pretty much the same, and acid is defined as a hydrogen ion or a proton donor but the definition of a base really did change. No longer are we talking about OH minus. Bases are defined as proton acceptors. Okay, and so if you look at this reaction, again, this is mostly review, okay? If you look at HCl from left to right, what is it doing? It's donating away its hydrogen ion and who is it giving it to? It's giving it to the H2O. H2O is receiving, accepting that hydrogen. So this is the Bronsted-Lowry acid. Water in this case is acting as the Bronsted-Lowry base. Okay. All right, let's review a little bit further. First of all, guys, let me just make sure you all understand in this reaction you're seeing up here, there is no element A on the periodic table, okay? I'm using HA to mean any random acid, okay? Let's review the terms conjugate acid and conjugate base, okay? Your conjugate base on the right-hand side there, that A minus, is whatever is left of your acid after it has done what acids do, donated its proton. Your conjugate acid is the opposite. It's whatever is left of your base after it has done what bases do. It has accepted that hydrogen ion. Okay, so let's not forget these vocabulary terms because you, you, know, you will see multiple choice questions, especially that will ask you to identify a conjugate acid base pair. Okay, same reaction. So this is an equilibrium system. We've talked about equilibrium already. And if you think about it, in this particular reaction, the H2O is acting as the base and the A minus is the conjugate base. Both of those species whether you look at the reaction in the forward direction or the reverse, both of those species are going to be accepting a hydrogen and they compete for it. There's a competition. And I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. We're gonna talk a lot more about this later on, but how do you know which direction, forward or reverse, is more dominant? Well, whichever base is it H2O? Is it A minus? Whichever base is stronger is going to dominate that direction. Okay. We're going to talk a lot more about that later on. It also depends on the acid. 
but we will get to that. I just wanted to give you a little bit of a sneak preview. Okay, a little bit more vocabulary here. Monoprotic, okay, mono, one, protic, proton, one proton. These are acids that have just one hydrogen to give away, whereas acids that have more than one hydrogen to give, we call those polyprotic. Okay, you can see this one has two hydrogens, this acid has three hydrogens, and you can even get more specific. H2S is a diprotic acid. H3PO4 is a triprotic acid. Okay. Oxy acid, that's a word you've seen before, although it's been a while. It's exactly what it sounds like. Oxy acid, an acid that has oxygen in it. Okay. And then the, this last one really isn't going to come up until we, you know, cover organic chemistry, but an organic acid is usually um, a very weak acid, acids that have carbons, oxygens, hydrogens, okay? Um, we are not really going to talk about those too much. We'll see those a little bit more when we get to um, organic chem. So here's a, fi a final vocabulary word you need to know, amphoteric, okay? And another, there's another vocabulary word that means the exact same thing, and certain textbooks sometimes use the other word. Sometimes you'll see the vocabulary word amphiprotic. Amphoteric, amphiprotic, they mean the same thing some kind of a species that can act as an acid or a base, okay? Something that is capable of giving away a hydrogen, something that is also capable of accepting a hydrogen. And water is a classic example of that. It is not the only example. For, um, for example, um, look at this ion. Okay, that ion can act as an acid. And if you think about it, if it were to give away its hydrogen, it would become the sulfate ion. And that definitely exists. Okay, so HSO4 can definitely act as an acid. It can also act as a base. HSO4 minus can accept a hydrogen. And if you think about it, what would it become then? sulfuric acid, and that definitely exists. Okay, so water is sort of our classic example of something that is amphoteric, but it's not the only thing. Okay, and when you have a sample of water, okay, you, you know, let's say it's a water bottle you're drinking from, you're not just drinking H2O. Water goes through a process of what's called auto-ionization it auto ionizes, automatically ionizes into H3O plus and OH minus. Okay, so you're not just drinking H2O, you're also drinking these other ions. Okay, this is of course hydroxide. This one is one you might not be familiar with, and if you've never learned its name, you should learn it now. It's called hydronium, okay? H3O plus is called hydronium. We're going to see that ion a lot in this unit eight. Okay, let's label our parts here. Okay, and if you think about it, guys, if we were to write an equilibrium expression, okay, now we haven't talked about that in a while, but let's refresh our memory about what an equilibrium expression looks like. Remember, it's molarity of your products over reactants, okay? And right here, this is our expression for the reaction above it. And you might say, well, wait, 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 wait. You said products over reactants. Where are the reactants? Well, do you remember what states of matter are excluded from equilibrium expressions. Remember, we leave out solids and liquids, 
Okay, so the expression for the water ion autoionization reaction just looks like that. Okay, now what's going on here? Well, this is just a shorthand, ladies and gentlemen. You will very often see H3O plus written in a sort of shorthand fashion as just H plus. And, and you, you can write it either way. It doesn't matter. They represent the same things. Okay, now KW, this equilibrium constant that is specifically for this water auto ionization reaction, has a value, a specific value. You don't have to memorize it. It is on your equation sheet. I'll show you where it is in just a second. It is equal to 1 times 10 to the negative 14th as long as that is the temperature, which to be quite honest, most of the time it will. Okay. And I want to show you where that is. Okay. It is right here. Okay. It says KW equals H plus times OH minus. And you can see that you're given the value right there. Okay. So you don't have to memorize it. And this equilibrium expression, this equation, is going to become very useful to us later on today. All right, so there it is again, All right? And again, it is temperature dependent. We're going to talk more about that at the end of today's lesson. Okay, but what I want to focus on right here is what does it actually mean if you say a solution is neutral or acidic or basic? Because I'm sure you've used those terms before, maybe in your everyday lives, but on a chemical basis, I'm not sure you really knew what you were saying. A neutral solution, first of all, guys, does not always mean pH is seven. What it truly means to be neutral, remember what brackets mean, molarity. Neutral means the molarity of your H plus or H3O plus, either one, same thing, the molarity of that ion is equal to the molarity of the hydroxide. If you say something is acidic, what that really means is that the hydrogen ion concentration is greater than hydroxide and vice versa if you say something is basic. So guys, if you ever have to answer, let's say a free response question where it says, is the reaction, or excuse me, is the solution acidic, neutral, or basic, justify your answer, this is how you'll do it. You would compare your H plus concentration to your OH minus concentration. But we're gonna do an example of that at the end of today's lesson. All right, now, there's a, an equation written in front of you that is the one you will probably use the most often in this unit. Okay, you're gonna use it so much that you won't have to look at your equation sheet anymore. You will have it memorized. This is the ultimate way to solve for the pH of a solution. Negative log, log base 10, negative log of the hydrogen concentration, hydrogen ion. It is on your equation sheet. Okay, and there's a sister equation right next to it that looks like this. There is such a thing as the pH scale. There's always the, there's also the pOH scale. Okay, and guys, that little lowercase p really just means mathematically, that means negative log of. Okay, so pH means negative log of the H plus ions. POH means the negative log of the OH minus ions. Okay. Traditionally, you've learned that pH ranges from 0 to 14. Technically speaking, you can have pHs below 0. Okay. They're not going to go far below 0. And you can have pHs above 14. That does exist. But most of our answers are going to fall in that range. And I want you to understand something conceptually here. Look at this statement. As pH decreases, think about what that means there, guys. As something becomes more acidic, 
if you're moving towards zero on the pH scale, things are becoming more and more acidic. That means that the hydrogen ion concentration is increasing, but not linearly. It's increasing exponentially. Logarithms are an exponential relationship. It's really important that you understand that. Okay, now don't shoot the messenger here. Technically speaking, pHs have their own rules for significant figures, but it's not, it's not difficult. Okay. Let's say you were given a really easy question, and this was your given piece of information, this molarity. Shame on me for not putting units. Molarity. Okay. And I said, solve for the pH. Okay. Well, you would take that molarity and you'd plug it in right there. You put it in your calculator, negative log of that number, hit enter, and you'd get a pH. And what would come up on your calculator would be just the number eight. Well, here's how we round for sig figs in terms of pHs. And this would apply to pOHs as well. This number right here, this molarity has two significant figures. The number 1.0 has two significant figures. When you turn that into a pH, however many significant figures your molarity had, that is going to translate into the number of decimal places for my pH or pOH, whichever one you're using. So my molarity had two sig figs, so I want my pH to have two decimal places. Okay, so that's how the rule for sig figs works. However many significant figures your molarity has, that's going to translate into the number of decimal places when you convert to a pH or a pOH. Okay, so as we said, the pH scale, for the most part, goes from zero to 14. Zero being very acidic, 14 being very basic. Okay. The pOH scale, there is such a thing, is exactly the opposite. So a solution that is very acidic might have a pH of zero. It's going to have a pOH of 14. And if you look at it, guys, what do these numbers all add up to equal? They always add to equal 14. And that's another equation that we're going to see here in just a minute. Okay, so we've looked at these two equations. We have this one and we have this one. Remember what I just said, pH plus pOH is always going to add up to 14. Okay, 14 is something called PKW. But remember what I said, guys, don't be intimidated by all these letters. What does the little letter P mean? Negative log of. The negative log of the KW. Well, what's KW? Here it is. If you type into your calculator negative log of that number, you will get the number 14. You don't have to memorize any of these equations, okay, guys? All of them are here, okay? They're right in here. There's nothing to memorize here. The thing is, if you have any one of these pieces of information, any one of these four pieces of information, you can find the other three by using some combination of these react these equations okay and that's what we're going to practice right now and if you're wondering would you ever have to calculate a ph using these logarithm equations on multiple choice where you don't have a calculator and the answer is to be honest yes you wouldn't have to come up with an exact value but you can come up with an estimate. We're gonna go over that in just a little bit. Okay, but let's look at an example. All right, we're gonna do number one together and then I want you to pause the video and try numbers two and three on your own. 
So it says of pH, pOH, hydrogen ion concentration, hydroxide concentration, calculate whatever is not given. Okay, so we're going to do number one together, where I am given the hydroxide concentration. Now, you may go in a different order than I do. I'm just going to do things in the order that makes the most sense to me. What I'm going to calculate first, and I'll just, this is going to be a little bit scattered. Actually, I'll just do it on a new, a new sheet here. Okay. So we were given the hydroxide concentration. I am, what makes the most sense to me is I'm going to calculate the pOH first. Okay, so we were given this molarity, 1.2 times 10 to the negative fourth. Oops, let's try that again. And when I plug that into my calculator, and I'm gonna I'm gonna model that for those sig fig rules for you. 1.2 times 10 to the negative fourth has two significant figures, so I want my pOH here to have two decimal places. So there is my pOH. Okay, for me, what makes the most sense to do next is to find the pH. So I'm going to use this equation. Okay, so I don't know my pOH, but I do know the pOH, 14 minus that number. And so I'm going to get, I'm going to keep two decimal places again. So I'm going to get 10.08. Okay. So I've got two of the three pieces that I was asked to solve. The last one that I'm going to do is solve for the hydrogen ion concentration. And I'm going to use this equation. So I know my pH. Okay, now if you're uncomfortable using logarithms and you're not sure how to invert a logarithm, okay, here's what it is going to be mathematically. It's going to be, because a logarithm, this is log base 10, so it's going to be 10 to the power of my negative pH. Okay, if you're using a TI calculator, if you just do push the button second log, what you'll see come up in your screen is 10 to the power of blank, 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 and it's waiting for you to put in an exponent, negative pH. And I'm going to do that. And I get, and I'm going to use two significant figures. And there's my hydrogen ion concentration. Okay. If I were asked, is this, um, is this solution acidic, neutral, or basic? Okay. Guys, don't don't use the pH necessarily as your justification. What I would say instead, focus your attention on the OH minus and the H plus. Remember that what defines something as being acidic, neutral, or basic is how do those molarities compare? I can see that the OH minus molarity is greater than the H plus molarity. So that means this is definitely a basic solution. Don't use the pH as your justification. Use something like that. Okay. 
oops, that is the wrong slide. There we go. Okay, so I would like you guys to do, pause the video, and you do that same procedure, use those same equations to solve for whatever is not given in numbers two and three. All right, let's check your answers. Let's see how you did. Here are the answers for number two. And this might look a little, this one might felt a little strange because the pH that you get is negative. I mean, the pH is negative 0 0.30 and that does exist. You know, that just means this is a really, really acidic solution. Okay, but check your other answers. Notice that I've kept two decimal places for the pH and the pOH. I've kept two significant figures for the OH minus concentration. And here are your answers to number three. Okay, again, if you were asked, is this, is this solution acidic, neutral, or basic? Don't use the pOH or the pOH as your justification. Use these two concentrations. And how do they compare? I can see that the OH minus is greater than the H plus molarity. So this third question here, this must be a basic solution. Always use that as your justification. Okay, now, as I said, most of the time, this is gonna be something in like a free response situation, but could these numbers come up in a multiple choice where you don't have a calculator? And the answer is yes, you could. Yes, this could happen. Okay, so let's just look at number one as an example. Okay, the first thing that, that made the most sense to me in number one was to use this equation to solve for the pOH. Okay, so we're looking at number one. Let's imagine that the hydroxide concentration wasn't 1.2 times 10 to the negative fourth, but let's imagine that it was exactly 1.0. Okay. If you take this number and plug it into this equation, Okay, the pOH comes out to be exactly 4.00. If your deal, if your molarity, put your, always have your molarities in scientific notation. When you take the negative log of something in scientific notation, your answer is always going to be very close to that exponent. Okay, or the absolute value of that exponent. If the first term is 1.0, the answer is going to be exactly that exponent, okay? But if you look at, you know, what's actually printed in number one, it's not 1.0, okay? It's 1.2, so it's a little bit higher than 1.0. Well, in terms of logarithms, ladies and gentlemen, what that means is the answer is going to be close to 4, but because this first term is a little bit greater than one, the way logarithms work, that's gonna make the logarithm, uh, the answer for POH be slightly below the number four. And if you'll recall, our answer was that, okay? So if your molarity if you're looking at it in terms of scientific notation, when you take the negative log of that number, like a pH or a pOH, your answer is gonna be close to that exponent. But if the first term is any number greater than one, that's gonna start to drop your answer below whatever that number is, okay? And the higher it is, the higher this first term, the more it's going to drop. Okay, so let me erase all of this. Okay, so this one had a pOH of 3.92. 
Okay, let's imagine that number one, instead of saying 1.2, let's say it had 9.7 times 10 to the negative fourth. Okay, it's still times 10 to the negative fourth, but now this first term is quite a bit greater than one. So if I do negative log, I'm just, I just wanna see what the answer actually is. Here's my answer. Remember what I said, if this first term is greater than 1.0, my answer is gonna be somewhere below that number, okay? And look, look at what the answer is. Okay, it's almost down to the next integer. Not quite, but close. Okay, so the greater this number, this first term, okay, the greater your answer is gonna drop below that exponent. Okay, and it's a logarithmic scale. So you might say, okay, well, is 5.0 times 10 to the negative fourth, would that give me a POH of 3.5? No, not exactly. Um, believe it or not, if your first term, this is so weird, and I can't even explain why this is exactly. If your first term is pi, Please don't ask me to explain why this is. Some of you that are much more intelligent in terms of math, and if you don't believe me, type it in. If you put in pi for the first term in that uh, scientific notation, that's what ends you exactly halfway between three and four. Okay, I, that is super bizarre that, it's, that it works that way, okay? Um, but that's how you would do this without a calculator. Now, would the AP exam expect you to be able to predict the exact POH in this situation? No, but they would be able, you could be, would be able to limit it or um, eliminate answer choices and narrow it down to what is most likely the correct answer. All right, let's wrap this up, guys. We, we saw this equation before, that auto-ionization reaction for water, okay? And remember what I said to you, that, that re equation that you have on your equation sheet for Kw, okay, equaling 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14th, that is true if it's at 25 degrees. We'll look at it if it's at 40 degrees. The value for Kw is different. You don't need to memorize anything. If Kw is, if we're at a temperature, anything other than 25 degrees, they have to give you that value. Okay, but let's think about this for a second. Okay, let's say I have a sample of pure water but it's not at 25 degrees, it's at 40 degrees, okay? What would these concentrations be at 40 degrees? Well, if you come back up to this equation right here, if you take the square root of 2.9 times 10 to the negative 14th, let me show you what I get here. For both OH minus and H plus, I get this number. 1.7 times 10 to the negative seventh. Okay, fine. Well, it's neutral because both of these molarities are equal to one another. Okay, if I'm dealing with pure water, that will always be true. But is the pH set equal to exactly seven? It's not. If you take the negative log of this number, ladies and gentlemen, look at what we get. We get a pH equal to 6.77, okay? Water at 40 degrees is slightly, is, is technically neutral, but it's not at a pH of seven. 
which is why I say don't use the pH as your defense for whether something is acidic, neutral, or basic. Always use these molarities, how do they compare? Use that as your justification. So I know that's a little weird to think of water as being a pH other than seven, but it can be. Okay, so this is the last thing I want you to do today. I want you to pause the video, read this problem, see if you can solve it. All right, so let's see how you did. So for the first part, Okay, you were given the hydronium ion concentration. Remember guys, hydronium H3O plus, you can write a shorthand for that as just H plus. Okay, I'm using my KW equation. Now, because it's at a temperature other than 25 degrees, they had to give me the KW, but then I can plug in my H plus concentration and I can solve for the hydroxide ion, just like that. Is this solution acidic or basic? Justify your answer. Remember, don't talk about pH. We didn't even calculate a pH, but instead you want to compare those molarities. This reaction is definitely basic. Why? Because the OH minus concentration is greater than the H plus concentration. Okay, I know that was a lot. Okay, that was a lot for us to cover in this first unit. Um, but remember, there's very little memorization here. Okay, all those equations are there for you on your equation sheet. So I hope you have learned a little something today and I look forward to seeing you next time.